This is Shooting Spaces with Rich Baum and Brian Berkowitz. Hey, and welcome to Shooting Spaces. This is Brian Berkowitz here from New York. And Rich Baum from uh, Sacramento, but uh, right now down in, uh, in beautiful Baja, California. So things are, things are good. I've got another couple of weeks down here and then back to the main grind, man. You ready? Back, ready to back come back home. to the grind and uh, kick it full I'm force cool. into was- the spring? I was home last week, the week, you know, a week ago. So uh, I've been coming back and forth, doing a little commuting, and it's really not that far. It's kind of nice, and we get cheap plane fares. So maybe I'll do a podcast sometime on how you can try, try and make it work, uh, working remotely from uh, two different countries. And uh, it's going well, though. No, I'd love it. It's great. Did a lot of photos today on my my uh, iPhone 13 Plus, and we did oh. a hike. And I got to tell you, we, we should do a whole show on that, man. That's well, you, you, you went awesome from like, camera. you're using like the eight or the seven or something. So this is like a major, eight, major eight upgrade plus. for you. Oh boy. I uh, actually timely because I was seeking out information on the 13. Uh, and I actually, uh, when I was home, uh, trashed the uh, A plus. So, um, and no problem. Cause they were going to, what were they going to give me $180 if it was in good shape? So yeah, I might as well upgrade. And, uh, but, uh, Everything's That's good. It. You're back in, yeah. uh, so you're in 2022 now. Good. With the, with an updated oh, yeah, phone. Yeah. yeah, I'm stoked. So listen, let me go into, first of all, a word from HD Photo Hub, one of our wonderful sponsors. Provide your clients with the convenience of online ordering and scheduling with HD Photo Hub's new smart scheduling system built specifically for real estate photography business. With HD Photo Hub, you'll save precious admin time with an all-in-one system to deliver your images, videos, 3D scans, and property marketing kits, along with built-in client invoicing, order management, photographer payroll, and so much more. Check out hdphotohub.com to find more. That's hdphotohub.com. There you go. Okay. Awesome. And with that, let's uh, let's get right into it. We haven't asked the guy's question today, and we have a guest with us to help answer that, who is also an HD Photo Hub advocate. And with that, let me uh, introduce Dave Koch. Dave, what's going on? Thanks for coming on with us. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here. And, um, you know, two of my, my all-time heroes. Oh, God. Where? 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 <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, with the uh, with those guitars on your wall, you're my hero, man. Right on. Okay, you know, I didn't another, collect them all. Understood. They're family, and you know, we've been doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah. So, so tell us a little bit about yourself, Dave. Yeah. Uh, how do, what do you What are you into? What are you doing? Give us like the two minute uh, elevator pitch. Okay. Um, I started out um, at Cal State Northridge, and um, hated it. It the radio TV program was horrible. Um, and so I got hooked into a little place, uh, Rich, you probably know, called the American Film Institute. I did. Did a few films there with the program. Yeah. yeah, that was really good. We did um, uh, a film with a guy who up to that point had only played Reverend Jim on Taxi. Well, Michael so, Lloyd. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Christopher Lloyd before. Back Christopher to the Lloyd. Future. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Anyway, I did that and I kind of didn't like the idea that, you know, the jobs were also separated and all that. So I got into television and I did TV news photography for 15 years and um, just loved it. It's one of the best backgrounds we could have as a um, real estate photographer, because every day is a new situation. Every day is new lighting situations. You have to problem solve. You have to, um, you have to think on your feet. You have to be fast and coming back with nothing is not an option. So um, a lot of fun. I really enjoyed doing that. Um, And then in the middle space in there, I, for a while, I started uh, building websites. I worked for a couple of, um, marketing companies, built websites on WordPress and all that. Um, Then went into um, building WordPress for a company that then downsized. And my wife said, you know what? You really like photography. You should get back into that. And um, I kind of didn't know what to do. I saw some Rich Baum videos on on the YouTube and I said, ooh, that sounds kind of easy. And boy, was I wrong. (laughs) Um, and here I am. Well, did she have a good, did she have a good steady job to, uh, support you? 
when you, you know became what? a photographer? My wife is the absolute best. She she got me through those those first year or two when you're you're trying to find jobs and all that and just was was phenomenal and even still she's our insurance our retirement program all that stuff yeah. um so yeah and she's just been so darn supportive yeah. awesome well rich i think that's a, a it's quite a testament to you because you make this work look so easy so well, I'll tell you, I, I have a lot of friends that did TV news and it's its own thing. I was, when you said it, I was going to go, I'm sorry, man, but no, you, you <laughs> had a good experience and, uh, you know, hopefully it left you with uh, some kind of a pension or some kind of something, but, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it was great experience and you're right, man, doing, uh, that kind of work keeps you on your toes. I have a really high level of professionalism. I, uh, have always have always had because of 35 years making movies, but anyway, let's go, let's go into, uh, today's, today's episode. So Brian, what are sure. we doing? So you, you mentioned a little of your background, David, and um, that's sort of relevant to our Ask the Guys question. So let's play it and then let's uh, let's get right into it. Here we go. Hey guys, I have a quick question for you as a newbie into wanting to start my real estate photography career as a profession and collecting money. I've been photographing for a number of years now. Um, people have asked me, however, I've never taken money, but very happy to so, but in going forward, first steps in website, what is your recommendation as a website platform to use? And if you also recommend blogging, I appreciate the answer. Any details you can offer me greatly appreciated. This is Jennifer from Long Island, New York. Thank you. All right. Jennifer from Long Island, New York, my hometown. So I guess we have some competition here. Should we give her the right advice or the wrong advice? <laughs> Well, that's uh, another podcast for another time. How to work with your competition? Yeah, but Brian, well, you have no, you have no competition. I'm not, I'm not worried. Let's give her the best advice. Um, well, thanks for the question, Jennifer. And you know, there's two parts to it. So um, let's just jump jump right into it because Dave, you mentioned. Uh, I mean, the reason we why I originally thought to bring you on for this question was because of your pre, your PFRE presentation, which was strictly about websites, WordPress, and I think you dabbled a little bit into SEO, if I'm not mistaken, but not not really about SEO. Um, speaking of which, it was it was fun meeting you at PFRE. We didn't get to hang out as much as we would have liked because I had to peel out after uh, day one. But uh, it was fun, and you like to party, man. Let me tell you. <laughs> well, that was I. I can't wait for November this year. So let let's do dinner or something. For sure, it's on, and hopefully, Rich will make it this year. Yes. Um, yeah, Rich I, I, two I, years I, uh, in a row, hasn't he? Yeah. No, no, no. I did not. Miss well, Rich was at the first years. one. Second year was virtual, yeah. and then oh, third year. Right. Yeah. Third year he was kite surfing. I was I uh I did a presentation, if I remember correctly, um, for the virtual one. I did two presentations, I think. Yeah. So uh yeah. No, I was there, man. I was there. Okay. But uh no, I uh, I was gonna go, but uh, it just was not uh, in the in the cards. But uh, next year I'm gonna go. Okay. I'll be there cool. next year. All right. Mm -hmm. So let's get back to it, Dave. Mm -hmm. Best platform for real estate photographers for their websites. And there are many platforms out there. And I know we spoke about this um, briefly last night um, between Wix, Squarespace, WordPress, and a bunch of others, which are obviously geared a little bit more towards e-commerce. So let's just jump right in. What, what are your thoughts? What are your suggestions? What do you feel based on your experience is the best? And then we'll get into the whys and maybe even why um, your choice has advantages over others. So I'll give you the floor. Okay, thanks. Um, like you said, there's there's a ton of choices, and um, you know, honestly, it, it's it's like photography. There's a uh, hundred different ways to do anything. Um, I think long term, for a, a photographer, somebody you you want something that's going to be with you for a long time that can grow with you, that you can do SEO, which we mentioned earlier. That's optimizing for search engines. You're going to want all that in one big package. And because of that, I really feel that WordPress pulls together all those different elements and, and brings them all together in something that you can use and then grow with and that, um, that you won't outgrow. Um, it does tend to be a little hard to get into at first, 
Um, and I always kind of joke that it's the same way with Photoshop. You know, you can't be a Photoshop expert the first time you use it. But when you're first starting out, you don't need to be an expert in WordPress either. You know, you just need to be able to do a little, a, a few little things, build a couple pages. Then as you grow your business, you'll be like, mm, I need a portfolio now. And you'll be able to go uh, within the WordPress um, ecosystem, find a portfolio, bring it in and learn how to use that and add all these different elements to it as you grow as a photographer. Um, you know, getting back to the SEO, I think that's one of the most important things about it because that's one of the best ways to organically uh, get new clients. Um, when you've got a, a really good website that um, that is tuned for your keywords, um, which is something you can do in WordPress, um, when people go and search in, in your city, and look for a real estate photographer. If you've tuned your website, you're gonna come up first, you're gonna get the calls first, and it's just gonna benefit you in the long run. Well, yeah, so, I mean, WordPress is a little tricky and I think intimidating for people yes. who are starting out because you take a company like Wix or Squarespace, you know, I have a site on Squarespace and we'll get into that in a few minutes and why I'm actually switching back off of them. We talked about last night, but, um, they're so easy and you know, you know, you pay them like 120 bucks and you have a site up in two hours and you don't have to think about it. And it's, you know, everything is template based and it's so easy and WordPress gets so tricky because you need to find a server and you need to find somewhere to host your site. And then you need to build your site. And while there are templates or, or themes as they call it, that you purchase to make things easier, it is a lot more complex on getting started so do you think for newbies coming in just to have something get it get you know get up and go quick you still say you know what spend the time doing that or just get something up right away you know tomorrow and then then slowly spend your time and doing it do it right i'll kind of come at that a little backwards if that's okay, okay. um i think i think we can be as photographers notoriously lazy when it comes to all those other things that we have to do or should be doing. And, you know, the right thing is to do it right the first time, I think. And I think Wix and Squarespace and all those, they, they fill a niche wonderfully and it's a great way to get started and get going. But I'm afraid that you will leave it at that if you're not forced to. Um, you know, if you can make yourself do it, yeah. Um, but I think a lot of people will be, you know what, that Wix site is, is good enough and, and you'll never see that growth in, in potential that you could see. Um, how long have you been working on your Wix to, to WordPress um, transition? Talking about me? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm on Squarespace, not Wix. Oh, oh, um, yeah. I so have a Wix. I have a Wix website for my, uh, for my coaching and, um, also a WordPress. So I'm kind of in both situations. Yeah. So, so yeah, just to give, to give you a little bit more detailed background, Dave and, and the listeners, um, I, you know, I've been running WordPress sites for 10, 15 years, if not more. I mean, our shooting spaces podcast site is strictly a WordPress site. Um, and my sites were running WordPress and I was ranking great. I was doing great with SEO, doing a ton of work. I use the all-in-one SEO plugin. I know you on PFRE recommended Yoast, I think, um, but I use all-in-one SEO and it's, it's the same thing at the end of the day, I think. Um, and I decided to switch to Squarespace not sure exactly why, about a year and a half, two years ago, about a year and a half ago, um, probably because I ran across their templates and I really like them. And I, there are thousands and thousands of themes available for WordPress, but I was like, I was, I was looking for a design upgrade and I came across some Squarespace themes that I really liked and really fit what I was going for. I was going through a rebrand that was around the time 
Uh, if you remember, Rich, where I was doing a lot of the branding sessions with Tony, Tony Colangelo, and I was rebranding and I was trying to come up with a new look and a new design. And I came across some Squarespace templates that I loved. And I was like, these look great. Let's just do it. It's quick. You know, 120 bucks. I'll have a set up in two hours with my portfolio and I'm done. But what I've noticed over the last year, year plus, is that my rankings have significantly dropped. And I'm not sure the exact reason. And um, for people that are interested in finding out even more detail than what we discussed today, there's a there's a full fuel your photos podcast. I don't know if you ever listened to this, Dave, um, but you might be interested in um, fuel your photos. And um, these guys have a, a Facebook group also, just all about. And I want to thank Jordan Powers for pointing them out to me. All about SEO for photographers, and they have one episode of their podcast, which is comparing um, all the different platforms for a photography website. Why Squarespace's pros and cons, WordPress pros and cons. Um, and at the end of the day, I mean, I'll just jump ahead and spoiler alert for anyone that wants to know, stop listening now. They recommend WordPress above all um, um, with specific themes that they also point out actually. Um, but I've noticed a specific, you know, a, a tremendous drop in my rankings over the last year and a half to the point where now I'm in the process. And I say in the process because, um, I started it, but I'm busy and, you know, you, you kind of work 15 minutes here, 15 minutes there just to get it done. That's just the way, the way life works. Um, I'm in the process of redesigning my site as similar as I can to my Squarespace site, because I still love the design of my Squarespace site and going back over to WordPress. Um, so that's kind of where I am now. Um, and kind of, I, I sort of want to see the difference. And as sort of an AB type of test, what I'm doing is I'm keeping my site structure, my URL structure exactly the same. I'm keeping my keywords, my descriptions, my titles exactly the same. And I want to see, um, as a sort of test to myself, the difference with everything exactly the same, every page structure, every URL structure, every um, keyword and description structure, exactly the same, the difference. And if I start boosting back up just from going back to WordPress um, versus Squarespace. That would be really, really cool to know. Um, while you were talking, I Googled, and there are some assistants too, um, some programs and stuff that will migrate your Squarespace directly to WordPress. Yeah, there, there, there are some things, especially for the blog posts, um, to, to definitely make it easier. Um, and I have to do that. I have to get on that. But there are some little things you have to do, like re-upload your photos and reattach mm -hmm. all your photos and stuff like that. But yeah, that will obviously take significant amount of work off, off my plate to do that. Um, so I got it, especially for my blog posts, because, and, and that might be a good segue to our second part, but um, I, I don't blog as often as I should, but um, I do have maybe 20, 30 blog posts on my site, which do rank fairly well. And I do get some leads from there that I want to bring over also and try to keep that structure the same. So yeah, I'd like to uh, jump in here if I can, because um, though, when we, we got this question, I wasn't sure I, we'd be able to, you know, we're not experts on on uh, website design and, and SEO, but we certainly deal with it. And my experience was um, I've had a um, several websites, and the last one I have is was made on WordPress because I believe, and it's tr very true to me, that WordPress you are going to get higher ranking. It is just that the uh, search engines like it more. It's 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 so much much. But I, I'm not qualified to go more into just into it than that. But I will say a couple of things. One is I bought a theme, and uh, I really like the theme. A friend of mine had it, and uh, a theme is basically just the look of your website. It's going to be, and then you input your information, you add your images, you do whatever you need to do. And I want to say that this theme turned out to be a, a big mistake because uh, it had parameters and it couldn't do a lot of things and it couldn't do slideshows like I wanted it. So you've got to understand that there's a lot of aspects to a website technically, aesthetically and technically 
uh, especially with web with WordPress, that it's going to have to um, work the way you want it to work, or there's a chance it's not going to be possible. And so I bought this uh, this theme, and I really liked it, and I liked aspects of it. But one thing I know that I want to really impress upon people is the one thing that you may change um, on your website is going to be updating your images. And I have for the last six months to a year. If you go to my website, I urge people to go to it and see that on certain platforms, it doesn't even work right. So I'm going to talk Uh-oh. to you. I'm going to talk to you <laughs> afterwards, Dave, because I'm ready to go. Uh, I've got a guy that helped me out kind of like you're offering to help me out, but, but, and I paid for it too, but it's costing actually in the long run cost me a lot of money because I let him host it and it's just forget it. And I can't change the images. And on some browsers, the images aren't even displaying right. And I actually have kind people out there. Are you on WordPress, messages. Rich? Uh, uh, it is WordPress. Yeah. Yeah. And so anyway, long story short is there's a lot of things to really understand. And and I do want to say that my WordPress site uh, with this theme is unbelievably unintuitive. It, it is so difficult for me. I have banged my head. Last time I tried to get into it, I spent probably 30 hours and it still isn't working right. Anyway, so my next thing is I got a Wix site for um, my uh, word for my um, workshops, and I found it to be extremely easy, extremely. Uh, it, it's what I needed for that because it's an ancillary website. It's mm-hmm. just an extra website, but it does all the linking to all the other things. And I want to say, even I could do it, and it was very easy. But you are one hundred percent correct. It's good enough. And it's something that we're probably just going to leave it and not change it. And something you should do is make sure whatever website you have, make sure you have the ability, if you have somebody build it or help you with it, make sure that you have the ability, though, to re- redo the photos as you would, would like. OK, so in, a, in two years, you, you're able to get in there and remember all your passwords, remember everything. And then you, you're able to um, change the photos out that you want. And it's much harder than it, it seems on the web, on my WordPress uh, website. But I want to say the Wix is great, but I don't think the Wix is what I would want to do for my primary site, especially because I know for a fact that my SEO has gone down because I used, and and the other thing too, is I have a WordPress blog and actually my WordPress blog is much better than my website. And I actually was thinking about taking my domain name and switching it with my WordPress because I can I can make that work and it's a blog. And my blog really, really got me going. I started it maybe seven years ago, but the problem is I haven't kept up on it. And I think you'll agree, both of you, if you're gonna do a blog and we'll get into that, the mm-hmm. most important thing in a blog is you got to keep it going. You got to keep it going and you've got to input it. And I think that it's much harder. It's like kind of doing our our um, podcast. It's a fun idea starting a podcast, but after four years, it's tough to get guests. It's tough to, to come up with something new. And, uh, you know, so those are kind of tips that I would have uh, to say to people. So I think WordPress is great, but you've got to be able to work with it and, and manage it. Um, Wix or, um, you know, Squarespace is probably great too, but maybe not what is right for you as a growing business. I'm also not growing. I'm kind of getting smaller. And a blog is great too, so maybe we'll go into blogging. But I just wanted to throw in my two cents worth because I'm more of a layman than Brian or uh, Dave at uh, knowing the technical aspects of these issues. Sure. And I, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, Dave, one of the biggest benefits to going with like a WordPress versus one of the other companies is that you have full ownership or full control versus one of these other platforms. And, you know, I'll, I'll call on you, Dave, to elaborate more because I know you're not in your head. So you know what I'm, what I mean. So, so please explain that. Okay. Um, you literally own every piece of code and everything on your website there um there's a program that's called updraft i believe and you can at any point that you want you can download download your whole website to your computer and if if you're being hosted on say bluehost and you absolutely hate them and you need to move over to bob's web hosting you just 20 minutes to download 
20 minutes to upload. You go to your DNS server. I hope this isn't alphabet soup time, but you just point to where the new server is and you're up and running exactly the same as you were. Um, also, and this may really help Rich a lot since um, his site is already built out and I assume he likes the posts, the pictures and everything. He just hates the, the way it's presented. I mean, you can literally download a new theme and look at it in a new theme and see a whole new setup and a whole new way of presenting the website in literally 10 seconds. Um, it's, it's, I think, I, I've never run Wix, but I would imagine that they're called skins there, I think, aren't they? Or, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's just like putting a new skin on top of, of your website. WordPress keeps the content and the, the presentation separate so you can put a new mask over the top of it and present it in a whole new way but none of that content is going to ch change at all if you've got a, a you know a font this big it'll be that big in in the news site and all you have to do is find a theme that works for you and and move over to it yeah well i'll be talking to you dave okay so that's another story so let's go into um blogging and, and i just want to get confirmation. Am I right? The, the Probably the most important thing of blogging is to have consistency and regularity. Is that correct? Google. Oh, well, yeah. before, before we blog, Rich, I was going to give a quick word from our friends at oh, iGuide so. because uh, we're going we're gonna to get low on time soon. Are you looking to expand your real estate photography business? Stand out from the crowd by offering 3D tours, accurate room measurements, square footage calculations, and professionally drafted floor plans. All from the click of a button with a state-of-the-art iGuide camera system. Get your first five eye guides, your first five standard eye guides up to 3,000 square feet free by adding the code shooting spaces in the referral section at camera purchase. Visit goeyeguide.com to learn more. And I think Dave, you're you're an eye guide user as well. Yeah, actually the computer I'm I'm doing this on is sitting on top of my eye guide camera box right now. <laughs> oh, nice. Um, and they have absolutely the best um, customer support in the world. Yeah. Uh, I, every time I talk to them, I have an answer in 10 minutes and it's complete and it's to the point. Yeah. No, anytime I have an issue. Yeah. I, I mean, I haven't been 10 minute lucky, but usually within an hour, <laughs> an hour or two, yeah. it's, which is pretty insane. And I do want to add, actually, I don't know if you remember, Rich, our last podcast or two podcasts ago, we spoke about the iGuide and doing virtual staging on the iGuide. I had somebody text me about three hours ago and said they listened to the episode and they're pretty confident it can be done. So for, for those that heard that and were interested, there, there is a way, I don't know how, but apparently there's a way anyway, <laughs> let's, I digress. Let's get back into it. You were talking about blogging, Dave, sorry for interrupting. Yeah. Oh, no problem. Um, Google loves new things and active things and more than anything, blogging shows that you're active and you're working on your site. Um, it's just, you know, like you guys have with, with your podcast, it's hard to come up with a new post every you know week or two weeks or, or whatever. And Google would actually like to see something every day. Um, the more active you are, the more relevance Google gives you. When, when people search for a real estate photographer or something like that, there's, I, over a hundred different um, elements that they rank and nobody even knows exactly how they rank them all, but how often you post and how often you update your website is actually one of the things they look at. Um, one thing I would do to kind of turn blogging on its ear a little bit that I think works for photographers. And what I do is every time I shoot a new house, I put up a new portfolio item and I treat the portfolio almost like a blog. And so I'm able to post every day, every couple of days, and I put new content up there. Um, again, I'm keywording it for things that I want to do. Usually it's the city that I shoot in or something like that. And I make that the title of that portfolio piece. And um, um, Brian, you were talking earlier about some of your old blog posts bringing in traffic. Um, that's called long tail. And it, what it means is, you know, some you don't get that many responses, but when you do, they match really good because they're looking for that exact thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the more and more portfolio items that you have where, you know, you could be talking about street names or small subdivisions or things like that.
You know, when people search for photographer for Murray or South Jordan or or Sacramento or something like that, you know, the more the the the, the more defined you can be, the more likely you are to get results for people searching like that. So blogging is good. And if you've got the, the, the stamina to do it, I don't, um, you know, more power to you. But um, I think as photographers, I think that portfolio cheat is a great way to keep the blog idea going and get the Google juice going um, without having to sit down and write something every day. Um, I rely on the realtor to write the the property description and I just run with that. Mm-hmm. So, so I sort of do a combination. It's weird. And I don't blog as much as I should. And uh, I'm guilty of it. And I know you say every day, but for the sake of, of being fully transparent, that that will never happen for me ever. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, and, and I think for um, most real estate photographers as well, they can safely say that probably will never happen, especially especially the volume guys that are shooting, you know, three, four or five houses a day. There's who the hell has time to go and blog. Um, but I, I sort of like your method um, about adding portfolio pieces. And I kind of do something in between where when I shoot, you know, a really nice project or a cool project, I'll make a blog post about it. Um, but in turn, I'll also go ahead and blog fully content heavy posts, whether it's uh, new tips for doing this or why you should do this versus this, um, solely pretty much for me to rank for some of those keywords, obviously I'm looking for, um, mm-hmm. but I sort of do a combination, but I do notice the biggest hits that I get and the biggest um, traffic that's brought in is from those projects where I'm hitting on those cities, like you said, as keywords or architecture firms or retail stores in my case, and those type of things, those that's where it's bringing me the most traffic. And obviously we all know traffic doesn't necessarily equate to um, bookings, but nevertheless, traffic and people on our site is better than no one on our site. So yeah, sometimes you never know what's going to hit with people. Um, one, one that I get a lot of hits on is real estate photography pricing. And um, I, in, in my um, PFRE presentation, one of the things I talked about was having Google tell you what your keywords should be. And um, what you need to do is create a Google account and go into their AdWords manager as if you were creating a, um, an ad for a real estate photographer. And it'll tell you, you know, if, if you wanted to run the ad and use these keywords, how much each of these different keywords would cost. And what that tells you is how much competition there are for those keywords and how active they are. And it'll run down and tell you exactly how many hits you're going to get per month for each one of those. Sure. And that, what, what was that called? Keyword planner or did they change yeah. the name? I, I oh, believe the- keyword planner okay. inside of Ad the people that are interested. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that, that is the best way to plan out what your keywords should be, because a lot of times they'll surprise you and they won't be what you think they are. And when you see something um, like you were saying, like the architectural firms and stuff like that, there's probably not a, a lot of people of um, other people that use that, that architectural firm with photography as keywords Mm -hmm. so you're gonna you're gonna win on that and you know again it's long tail it's you know people looking for something specific but if they've seen your work for that architectural firm and they google or yeah google that they'll come up with you yeah and the great news what what i found is besides for like the global architecture firms for instance like the genslers and those guys a lot of the smaller local or regional architecture firms um don't do a lot of website and SEO work themselves. So, so you're, you're going to have success when people are just searching for them. Mm -hmm. Um, Just ranking, you know, if, if they don't put a lot of effort on their own side into um, into doing SEO and stuff like that. And just to relate that a little more to, to real estate, let's say you have ABC brokerage that's not doing so much in terms of real mm-hmm. estate, uh, SEO, but you go out and you post a blog post, Hey, this beautiful house in, um, Murray, for example, where you live, Dave in Murray, I just shot this for ABC brokerage. Um, when somebody goes and Googles ABC brokerage, if 
if that brokerage is not doing a lot of SEO work, there's a good chance you're going to pop up as well yeah. and, and show up. And mm-hmm. again, like I said, uh, just full disclaimer, that doesn't always equate to money and sales, but it equates to eyes on you, eyes on your business. People know you're there. So, yeah. Yeah. I'd like to ask one more question for you, Dave. Um, how important is it to have a lot of people out there that are just getting started, like our caller, um, they may go for doing a generic WordPress site and have like uh, my WordPress site for my blog is just richboundphotography dot slash uh, WordPress or WordPress dot richbaum. So how important is it to have your own domain name? Isn't it really, really important? Just for me, it was always like I started with a smug mug site. I still have my smug mug site, but I don't use it for almost anything except selling some, like if I shoot a baseball game for kids or whatever, I'll sell, sell images there. But I always felt that the first thing is, is if some a client sees that it's a smug mug page, they're going to write you off going, you know, you're just a mom and pop or a, 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 a stay at home dad that wants to do photography. How important is having your own domain name and use your rich, rich bound photography. I went with, but having something like a name of a company, uh, full frame photography, that would be something you can sell later. How important is the name of your website and how important is to have your own domain? And Rich, I'm going to add on to your question um, for you, Dave. Um, what Rich asked versus potentially an exact match domain. Um, and for those for those who don't know what exact match domain is, I'll give you a quick 30 second summary. It's basically create, making your domain um, what I guess you want your main keywords to be that do you want to be targeted for for instance um where you're in utah so utah real estate photographer.com in mm-hmm. in dave's case yeah i i own commercial photography utah.com so okay that, that that's my answer yes it's super important because um you remember earlier we talked about the hundred different ways that google will classify your website the absolute number one, and we, we know this from playing around and experimenting, the number one most important key thing is your domain name. And the number two is the page title of that page. And if those all match up, you're, you are going to win um, for that keyword phrase. So it, it's not only important, it's imperative. Um, if, if you are shooting as, um, let, let's say visual interface, like I've never heard of them before. Um, I, I would not, nobody knows to search visual interface to find a company, but they know they want a commercial photographer. So they're gonna search commercial photographer. So those are the most important keywords that, that you can absolutely have. Um, nothing personal, Rich, but outside of us, not many people know who you are. Nobody's going to search Rich Baum photography specifically as much as they're going to search real estate photographer, really good real estate photographer in Sacramento. That's um, yeah. so that those are really where you want to go. And kind of on the same topic is you don't want to be doing rich at gmail.com for your email address. You, yep. you, you've got to be professional all across the board and use that domain name for your email. Um, and um, yeah, I think that's. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll be talking. So you will have plenty of time to talk about this when we get together. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will talk your ear off. you got me motivated, you know, New Year's good, 2022. Good. And um, I, I've had to do it anyway. And by the way, Brian, when you looked up my website, did was there a problem? Yeah, on your residential page, you have a right. ton of thumbnails, and you can't. There's no like light box or anything, so you can't click on them. And no, make but them at bigger. least you can see them on some browsers. You can't even see my images. So well, anyway. I'm on Safari. I can see them, but yeah. there's they're thumbnails, and I can't make them any bigger. I know. I couldn't get it going. Anyway, um, I'll be getting that going absolutely as soon as possible. And uh, that's the first thing I'm going to do when I come home. Absolutely. And what, one okay. cool thing I'll suggest to some people, um, which I've been doing for the last few years, and, and you know, it's been really successful for me, and it, it takes a little bit of work. So if you're willing to put in some work, I think it can be very successful. Is try, you know, let's say you have your, your main website or your main URL, your name, for instance, richbaum.com. 
see what's available as far as purchasing domains that may be some exact match domains and put together very small lead generation websites. And I'll give you an example. I own, um, I'm, I'm a drone pilot, as, as most of you know. I own Long Island Drone Photography.com. And I created this small site I built about two years ago. Haven't touched it since. No pictures. Ah, no no pictures. That's Rich's Great. residential site. Yeah. 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 Uh oh. Mm -hmm. um, so I own Long Island Drone Photography.com. I built a small WordPress site, probably about three or four pages, small portfolio, a lot of content in there. Um, ranks really well. And I probably get from that site and it just basically, it's a site that took me probably a half a day to build. Um, I probably get three to five drone leads a week from that site. And a lot of them don't pan out because as we all know, you know, random people are just, you know, have no budget is I guess a nice way of saying it. Um, but, um, despite that fact, I mean, it just, it's basically a lead generation site and just, it just sends me leads all day. Um, and it's not my main site. Nobody knows that I really own it. And if people reach out, I respond to them from my main email address. Cause I don't even have an email address set up. It literally forwards to my regular email. Um, but if you have time buy a per a couple of these exact match domain, um, URLs, if they're available, put together a small three to five page website and about us, a contact us page, a small portfolio, make your contact page, um, your about us page, you know, content and keyword heavy. Don't, don't overdo it with that keyword density because I think uh, Google will realize. Um, and the same thing with you, like your services, you know, very keyword oriented, basically what you're looking to rank for and just let those leads come in. It'll organically just over time, just, just grow and let some leads come in. So yeah, yeah. I, have, I have three of those. No, oh, there you three, go. You know, with the word Utah in them. And that, yeah, that works great. I do them as a single page, one long page with the contact us at the bottom. And it just forwards over to, to my regular website. I also have a real um, uh, uh, residential website and a commercial website that are separate. Mm -hmm. ah, I've, I've for real estate, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's important to not yeah. not muddy those waters. And um, you know, if somebody were a wedding photographer and also did this, I'd do those as different websites. That is the most important thing of any of this. I can't really believe I didn't bring it up. My I found that agents don't want to know that I shot a wedding on Saturday. Uh, they don't want to know how cute the baby was I photographed. Um, it is just um, it, they need you when they need you, and they don't. You don't. You don't mix different genres of photography unless you're going to maybe do headshots because they might be interested in headshots. But that's a definite no-no. And also, when you're getting started, don't put in uh, you know 50 photos of the same house. You've shot two houses, so people can tell that you've only shot two houses. You know, keep it, get it, mix it up, whatever you can do. So anyway, well, that's just wonderful. And the most important thing takeaway for me is get off my ass and just take care of my website. So I'll uh, take you up on your call, uh, Dave. Be fun to talk about guitars and websites. So okay. anyway, yeah, good. Um, I made another note too. Um you know, when somebody's getting started too, that's another reason I think to start off just straight into WordPress is because you can start with like the many sites like Brian was talking about and use that as your website. You're not going to have 500,000 pictures to put on it or anything like that. And then you can just grow into it and learn it as you, as you go. Um, another photographer in a completely different genre once told me, um, three excellent pictures are better than 50 so-so pictures. Um, people will remember you for your worst picture, not your best, you know? Oh, he's the guy who, who had the tilted horizon, right? You know, that's how people will remember you, you know? So, you know, don't be, a, don't worry that when you're first starting out, you've only got five pictures. If they're five good pictures, that will sell you. Yeah. Yeah, I think Tony Colangelo, who who has always been really strong on that, I think, what was he saying, Brian, about 20 photos? That's about it. Yeah, give or take 25. I mean, that's what I have in my portfolio, about 20, mm -hmm. maybe even 18. Yeah. 
mm-hmm. you know, okay. give them what they need to see in order to convince you. I mean, it, I guess at the end of the day, like if they, if they can't be convinced to at least give you that call after 15 photos, then they're not calling you. You know, what, what, what is 40 photos or 50 photos going to do? That's going to sway them at that point to call you versus the first 15, 20. Um, especially when most of us, I think are putting our best five photos we've ever shot as our best five photo, our first five photos. So if, if people aren't sold at that point, you don't need photo 30 through 40 yeah. or 50 or 60. That's just not necessary. So yeah. Yeah. Or you could be like me and just not have any photos up on your website. <laughs> See, that's how freaking good I well, am. Well, you have like 50 <laughs> photos, just none of them work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll take care of it. Anyway, <laughs> well, listen, um, I know we're running low on time. I want to just do a little shout out for uh, Photo Up, our, uh, also our sponsor. Who doesn't like free editing? Dave, you like free editing? Brian, oh, we like live free for free editing. editing. I love for free we editing. We live for free editing. We live for yeah. free stuff. We went into this on another, another episode. Let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> well, Photo Up is now offering 100 bucks off of free editing to Shooting Spaces listeners. You can choose to work with their team of trained editors starting at just $1 per image or choose to work directly with an editor to have them learn your specific style. Don't need editing help? Well, if you don't need editing help, Photo Up also provides virtual staging, property websites, photo delivery, and website design, and development services. Photo Up even offers specialized virtual assistance starting at under $7 an hour. Perfect if you're looking to add an assistant to help with administrative and marketing tasks. So head over to photoup.net forward slash shooting spaces or click the photo up link on the shooting spaces website to redeem your free $100 credit or simply mention shooting spaces when you sign up to receive 10 free credits and try out any of photo up services. That's photoup.net forward slash shooting space shooting spaces okay got that nice, out. nice rich i yeah. love it you're I you're ad libbing a little on the ad over there nice. i'm just growing i'm growing after four years you know god it's just amazing you know awesome now if i could get my website done i would really be <laughs> sh- 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 just doing great okay awesome okay. well let's uh let's thank uh thank you jennifer for your question mm-hmm. um surprisingly enough 150 plus episodes in we never really covered that so it's always uh good to get some fresh stuff in there so thank you jennifer from long island and uh i guess a fellow real estate photographer out here by me feel free to reach out to me jennifer if you have any questions and dave thank you for joining us for this conversation um why don't you dave i don't think we tackled this at the beginning give people your website a way to contact you if anyone wants to reach out to you touch base or anything like that okay um photoslc.com um not exactly the perfect domain name but um uh, photo slc i'm in salt lake city um or um the other half of my schizophrenia is davecoachphoto.com so d-a-v-e-k-o-c-h-p-h-o-t-o.com and that's all my nature photography is it photo uh, with a P or an F? I hate that when people. Oh, P A. Yeah. You know what? Okay. There's another really good website thing. Don't use call us four yeah. photos with an uh, four or anything like yeah. that. Spell it out the right Picks way. Picks with a P I X. Yeah. Yeah. Spell it out the Although right way. Although, if you could get a phone number, 777 7777, go with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I almost got eight six seven five three zero nine. Wow, that's impressive. No, actually, they got a lot of calls there. Eight five seven six three zero nine. There you go. Okay, awesome. Well, what first wonderful... off, I want to apologize because I called you Koch <laughs> instead of Coach. So, oh, you know what? I've always people say Cook, people say Koch. Um, but I said it publicly, so I need to publicly apologize. <laughs> well, you know what? We amongst ourselves can't figure out how to say it, so I don't expect anybody else to know. Uh, d- look at my last name. I get gets butchered all the time, especially with spam callers. Um, it's, brutal. <laughs> it's, br- it's brutal, but what, what can you do? My family's from Romania. Anyway, yeah, I hear it all. Um, 
anyway, thanks, thanks for coming on, Dave. Um, Thank you appreciate very much it. for having me. And hopefully if anyone has any questions about their website, you know, they can reach out to um, you and you can help them, let them know uh, any advice you have for them. And uh, I know you and Rich will be doing some work together, it sounds like. so. Uh, yeah, I've helped a few people since um, PFRE also. And, um, you know, if, if I can, can I take just two seconds? Yeah, do your thing. Okay. Um, you know, I, I listen to a lot of your podcasts today. And one of the things like Nathan Cool, um, one of the things I hear consistently from all the people that I think are, are the really, really good photographers is the, the willingness to learn and to teach and to give back. And, and I, I, I think that's a trait that, that maybe, I don't know if it makes a good photographer, but it, it, it sure seems to help. And, um, you know, this is kind of the way I can maybe give back a little bit and help my fellow photographers. So, yeah, if I can help out, reach out and I'm, I'm happy to do that. Um, but I, I just think, you know, what you guys do is, is, is awesome. You know, I grew up learning from Rich. So, you know, it, when it, you were a boy, <laughs> yeah, when I was just a little squid, but, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the, the cool thing is, is you, you put that stuff out there. And, and, um, and you're out there helping people. You're not just, you know, this is mine. I'm greedy. I'm keeping things to myself. And I, I think that's commendable. And I think, you know, what I think uh, partly selfishly, um, partly not, I think it helps you grow. I mean, I can't tell you how much me personally, and I'm going to get, I'm going to get a little selfish here for a second, how much me personally I've learned in my photography business and the relationships I've built just from doing this podcast, 150 plus episodes. I mean, you know, speaking with you, Dave, and speaking to, I don't even know how many guests we've had on Rich at this point, but probably over a hundred at this point, just speaking to over a hundred different photographers and different industry professionals from around the world. Just, you just take a little bit here, a little bit from there and it, it all helps your, your career grow. So for people that don't, and don't do that, you know, post your images online and tell people how you did it. Just that little bit of, of giving back um, helps you grow a long way because, you know, you giving that back out to people, people will give it right back to you. So. And I think when you teach too, you kind of have to analyze what you're doing and you, you can learn from yourself by how did I do that? Oh yeah, I did yeah. this and this. Um, but yeah, giving back is so important. And I think, I think that's a good thing. And, and, you know, one thing, if I can speak um, that, I, I'm not changing the world here. Okay. When I've been doing my YouTube channel, whatever I've been doing and doing my, my course, I started, I, I made my course, my residential real estate photography course. Uh, I made that and released it. So yes, I want to make money, but it is to help people be successful. And I can say, I don't change lives or, you know, I'm not a Mother Teresa, whatever. It's just real estate photography. But I know for a fact that I have helped people become successful and made it easier for them to make more money, spend more time with their family, go out and, and spend money and have a good time and a good life. And you know what? That's what it's always been about for me. And the things like, Brian, you're saying, the things I've gotten from it, I'm, I've met you through it. I've met uh, PFRE. I've been involved there. I've gotten workshops going. It's all from learning and teaching and having people learn from me. So it is a, a really rewarding thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and when I hear when people post, uh, yeah, if you want to look up some, go look up Rich Baum and Nathan Cool. And, you know, we, we joke about that, Nathan and I, but it's really a really cool thing. And the hardest thing, though, is like our web, like our podcast, Brian, it's keeping it going month after month, year after year. I mean, I've been doing videos for nine years, almost nine years now. I can't believe it. But uh, this new course is is really exciting because I've gotten so many people that have gone rich. This is really so much better than your YouTube channel. And it's really helping me get going and being successful. It's not just a plug here. This is real, real what's been going on. And it's just been great. So I, I'm thrilled with it. And you know what? If we can all help somebody be more successful in their business, uh, then more power to it. And it's a lot of fun, too. It's a lot of fun to share what we know, I mean, how long have we been doing this forever? How long have you been doing photography, uh, real estate photography, Dave? Uh, 10 years. 
10 years. That's a long freaking time. Yeah. Brian, how long you been doing it? 12, 13? Uh, I started about 2014. So about eight years. Yeah. Going on yeah, my and boy, those first photos you posted are really good. <laughs> yeah, let's not go there. They're, avail <laughs> they're available online if anyone really wants to see. Just do no, a little research. We, we, it just shows how much better we've all gotten. Well, hey, thank look. you so much, uh, man. And listen, uh, this was an Ask the Guys question. If anybody out there has questions, we always love you to, to contact us through shootingspacespodcast.net. Oh, it was shooting spaces podcast.net or shooting .com. .com. Shooting spaces podcast.com on WordPress. And, and it's, <laughs> and you can record a 90 second question and plug your business and, and get a professional like Dave to come on and uh, tell you all how to, how to make it better. So use that ask the guys feature. Remember that Brian and I have both released. Brian does commercial real estate photography and I'm doing residential real estate photography. These are full courses and they will teach you everything you need to know to get going and being successful. And if you're already doing what you're doing and you're doing HDR and you want to start using lighting, my video will show you that. My tutorial will do that. And um, these are just great things. And also on our website, we've got things like presets. We've got uh, webinars. We're going to be coming up with a couple of really great webinars coming out in 2022 in another few months. Uh, Brian's having a little baby coming in a couple of weeks, yeah. so that's going to slow you down a little bit. But we are busy here at Shooting Spaces, and I just want to thank everybody for, for checking us out. So, Dave, thank you for coming on. Brian, thanks for hanging out. And uh, everybody out there, just go out and shoot some spaces. This has been Shooting Spaces. For more episodes, visit shootingspacespodcast.com and visit our education site at shootingspaces.com dot net.